Women in Sports Weekend. We're here to celebrate the progress of women's sports over the past 30 years, to pay tribute to those that came before us, the Billie Jean Kings of the world who laid the foundation for women's sports. We're also here to acknowledge that we have a very long way to go. As a former professional bowler, I can tell you that while it has improved, recognition and financial reward is not where it needs to be. It's difficult on the PWBA tour, but our athletes, like so many female athletes, persevere because of their passion for their sport and because they feel a responsibility to continue to build on the foundation that was given to them so that one day your nieces, daughters, granddaughters, and great-granddaughters will be able to not only reach the roof, they'll be able to raise the roof. last season, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Carolyn, how has Title IX affected your life? I'm one of the lucky ones who has benefited greatly from the hard work of all those people through the years to bring women's sports to where it needs to be. My dream started at West Texas State University where I received a partial bowling scholarship. I learned about life, myself, and the many opportunities that were available for me in the sport of bowling. I stand here as the reigning bowler of the year and that was one of my dreams. I hope now that I can help create new dreams for all the women all over the world so that they can fulfill anything they want. And I'm sure that you will. Right now, let's talk about the top two qualifiers this week. Maxine Nabel, our number two seed, is dreaming of that first victory. And top seed Leanne Barrett, well, she's made some of those dreams a reality already. These two players differ in stats only. They both, though, are a field player. Maxine has decided to take her game to the next level and make the changes necessary to get to where she wants to be. She's changed her arm swing, she's changed her timing, and with sheer talent and these changes, I think we're going to see Maxine Nabel in the winner's circle very soon. Leanne has struggled with her timing over the last two years. She says it comes and goes week to week, but the last two weeks she has been rock solid from start to finish she has thrown the ball well she is confident and she has made some great ball selections i bowled next to leanne this week and she proved to everyone why she is one of the most versatile hook players on our tour i think the ladies are ready to start bowling back to you jan Thanks, Carolyn. I think they are ready. And here's what the ladies bowled on all week as well as tonight. It was a wood surface, 26.55 milliliters of conditioner on each lane, 35 foot, and it was offense oily. It was compliant with sport bowling conditions. So a lot more difficult than your lane conditions at home. <laughs> the trio. Slapping hands, and it looks like Wendy McPherson will be the first up. 34 years on tour. She was so dominant throughout the 90s, that would be why she was named the bowler of the 1990s. She's pausing for a moment, just uh, waiting for some action going on in the approach to, to clear up so she can, she can start bowling. Ready for the opening shot. Carolyn, she's playing pretty far out. That's basically where you had to be this week. There was a lot of hook to the right. You had to project the ball to the right and let the hook take the ball into the pocket. And basically, as you're going to see here with Michelle, who is one of our players out on tour who really likes to hook the lane, she said she basically tried to throw harder and straighter and get as far right as she could. Oh, that's how you pick up the 710. It's not so hard. <laughs> Michelle has a tendency to throw the pins around just a bit. Kim Terrell, now you saw her last week. 
14 years on tour, nine titles. Two of those titles, the majors, the U.S. Open, and the Queens back-to-back. And it looks like it may be a day of strikes. We saw this last week to start, and, and then things slowed down a little bit after that. Scores were very high again this week. Ladies threw a lot of strikes. This is only Wendy's second appearance this year, and, and she said that was fair, not, not really what she hopes for. Usually we've seen Wendy on the show quite a bit over the last four to five years, and like she said, you know, it's a fair year for her, but it's early in the year, and a lot of people yes. Yes. And last season through this time, through seven events, she only had one TV appearance, but the four years prior to that, she was there every week. And we see a little ag aggressiveness there in uh, Wendy. She's clenching her fists, and she's usually a little bit low-key on TV. Feldman striking. One of Michelle's strengths this week, she said, was ball speed. And you can see that Michelle is throwing a little bit harder than she usually does. She's a little bit further right on the lane. the ball a little bit right out to the gutter came back and blew the pins around now mcpherson against these two competitors is one and one against feldman career on tv yes and three and one against terrell so i'd say wendy mcpherson's chances are pretty good here <laughs> right i think wendy's chances are always good on tv considering the statistics that she's piled up Rockin' 10, I've heard, happened a lot this week. It was a, a lot of ring 10s this week, and the pins, I mean, it did. It, I mean, they would wiggle and just stand, and, and everybody kept looking, how can we leave this many 10 pins and we're averaging 220? But on the games where you did carry, you got seven or eight in a row. Michelle Feldman, 1-0 versus Terrell. That's career TV stats. A lot of these athletes haven't met a lot on television. No, they haven't. And I'll tell you, there's <laughs> the three of them. You know, Michelle does get a little animated. Wendy usually is a little, little low-key, and so is Kim. But so far, the first couple frames, everybody's clenching fists and looking at each other. Could be very exciting. Wendy covers up the 10 pin and obviously is always important, especially on the sport condition. I know the scores were higher, Carolyn, yeah. on sport condition than we've seen. Uh, but it was the pattern. It was a little bit shorter pattern also. Yes, which creates a little, so like I, I said, a little finish? bit of hook to the then right. I, I so a lot of people, all okay. you have to do is project the ball to the right, and your ball was going to come back and hit the pocket. It was not hard to get to the pocket this week. Let's look at Kim Terrell's swing so far this year. That first not place victory, that was the Queen's to oh. season. Coming in light again, blowing the pins around, sending one over to knock out the 10. Here it comes. Get out of there. Kim said even last year before she won the Open, that things were changing for her. And I'll tell you, even on TV, she's been getting the breaks and bowling well. Already defeated Feldman throughout the week. She also lost to her. They fight. Wendy getting it right out to the gutter again, just like Kim. Ball comes roaring back, four pin. Michelle Feldman right now working on three strikes, as is Kim Terrell. They're both tied for the lead by 11 pins. I think we've seen this out of Michelle before in the past. <laughs> Wendy getting the ball to the right, right on the lip. Here it comes, four pin. Pin almost coming over and knocking it out, too. Changes ball, some goes a little straighter, right at it. Covers it up, so Kim Terrell stepping up in the fourth, working on three in a row. We'll need to strike here to stay tied for the lead with Michelle Feldman.
Kim stated again this week, one of her strengths, I am consistent. She always feels that there's that one block where she hasn't bowled well. This, this week, she said, I've been consistent again. So Feldman and Terrell are both in the lead by 22 pins. We'll be right back with more action from Latham, New York. The championship round finals of the Empire State PWBA Classic are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 87 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Travel Lodge Hotels, proud to be the official lodging sponsor of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. And by PWBA.com, the tour's official site for news and information about the PWBA and its athletes. Wendy McPherson had a great start to this week. It kicked off with a Barbara Light Bauer Memorial shootout coordinated by proprietor Carol Judge. It was a low ball elimination tournament. And in the 25th round, Wendy McPherson struck to edge out Sabrina Duncan and win the $1,000 prize. There's a look at Barbara Light Bauer. All proceeds from the event were donated to a scholarship fund established in Barbara's name. McPherson donated a considerable portion of her winnings to the cause. Lou Bauer is on hand here and this that was just a short time ago barbara light was a pwba champion and longtime friend of proprietor carol judge this was her home bowling center and we all miss her absolutely she was uh, the epitome of what a professional woman bowler was to be in fact wendy made the comment and i quote i think this is the most fun i've had bowling in a long time tonight was a wonderful tribute to barbara she was very thoughtful special lady and will be greatly missed Rocker 710. Wow. Ball coming in light, shaking the seven, sending a pin over and shaking the ten, and neither goes. Oh my goodness. I really don't That's think just a I, bad break. I don't think I've quite ever seen one like that. Michelle Feldman now oh, trips the four for five in a row. are definitely not going Wendy's way right now. Kim said even though there was a great shot to the pocket, there were some pairs where it was very tough to carry, which I, which I stated before, you know, when you're averaging 220, you're saying, oh, how tough is it to carry? But when the scores are that high, you have to win matches and you have to pull big games. Right now, it's Feldman and Terrell. If Terrell strikes here, they'll still be tied for the lead. Terrell defeated Feldman this week, 249 to 206. And the four pin, not going down. Kim got that one a little left of her target. Didn't quite get it to the right. Four pin. So look at our millionaires so far, Wendy McPherson. Actually, the all-time earnings leader on tour, Alita Sill and Tish Johnson. Also in the million-dollar category, Leanne Barrett, who you'll see later, is very close to breaking through to that this year. With the win here today, brings her even closer. Is that a prediction? I'm not making any predictions. Okay. I'm making a prediction, though, that Kim is going to be very happy she made that fourth in after last week, because she stated, mental error, not going to do that tonight. She was thinking about how to adjust for the shot. Exactly. When she got it there, she it. Okay, so Wendy picking up the 10 pin, and Michelle Feldman, meanwhile, has the front five strikes. Don't forget, this lady has bowled a 300 on television before. I couldn't forget that. It was against you, Watson. Another great shot by Michelle. I'm telling you, every time she's on TV, it's a four or five bagger. <laughs> Well, that's her game. She's that's a, right. She's a strike player. Strike player, but she's really added a lot of versatility into her game. She said bowling on the sport condition last week has made her a better bowler. She's learned how to adjust quicker. And Terrell now in the sixth grade and at 10 pin. Much better shot by Kim. Got the ball further right towards the gutter. Ring 10.
202 average, 201 average. Wendy McPherson up a little bit this year over last year. But not as high as the top few in average. No, I think the top six are a little bit higher than they were last year by two or three pins. Uh, which is a concern as many games as we ball. They finally all went for Wendy. Kim Terrell now to shoot the 10 pin. Last week missed a 10 and a 4, but felt she made a good shot at the time. Averages to make the television shows so far this year and on pace and early on 213 and then a couple of big weeks 230 at the St. Clair Classic 222 at Harrisburg 225 here that's when you know you need to strike so if you don't have that ball in your that right ball in your hand you, you better find it and quick <laughs> so the string is broken at six for Michelle Feldman as she leaves a seven count Seems like she missed way left of where she's playing, didn't get, did not get it as far right as she had been. And as you can see, there is not any hold in the middle part of the lane. It goes high, 3-6-10. Kim needed to jump back on it, and another non-carry, leaving a seven pin. So for right now, Michelle Feldman still in the lead. Okay. Michelle Feldman this week stated she was using her spare ball at her left and right hand spares. She just threw her strike ball at the 3-6-10, missed it to the right. She may feel there's a little more oil to the right, to the left. I, I'm not really sure, but she said she'd been using her spare ball all week. So Kim Terrell spares it up. Michelle Feldman misses that spare, but she is still in the lead by a narrow margin. We'll be back in a moment to see who gets through this match. Stay with us. Congratulations to my broadcast partner, Carolyn Doran Ballard, who was nominated for an SB Award in the Best Bowler category. Carolyn, who won seven PWBA titles in 2001 and broke or tied 11 PWBA records, is joined by PBA bowlers Jason Couch, Parker Bone III, Walter Ray Williams Jr., and Pete Weber for this prestigious honor. Join ESPN for all the awards. That's live Wednesday, July 10th at 9 p.m. from Hollywood, California. Look at some of the records that she broke. Look at all those TV appearances. 18, the old record, 15, 985 games, 25 on TV, 16 TV match wins. Oh my goodness, Carolyn, what were you doing? I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna try to figure it out so I can get back on pace for this year. <laughs> yeah, I wish you would. We've said that every week. I don't know, I don't know what's going on out there. I'm just I'm pacing myself. <laughs> well, right now, Michelle Feldman, even with that open, leads by eight pins over Kim Terrell. Wendy McPherson trailing Michelle Feldman by 40 pins, so she really needs to get some strikes going here. She averaged 234 on Miss Caroline throughout the week. That's what a good shot needed. by Wendy. Now, of the three, Wendy had the highest TV pair average. Feldman 207, Terrell 206 throughout the week. And Michelle's average is up a little bit from last year. She's shaking her head. Why did I have to screw up the seventh <laughs> frame? Right back on it. Kim Terrell, though, still in this match. Just trailing by eight pins. Really needs to set up a strike here in the eighth frame. Low game, 165, high game, 278. And compared to what we bowled on last year, 165 is not that bad of a game for a low game. We saw a lot of 130s right. and 40s last year, so everyone's been pretty consistent. And that's... Well, Wendy McPherson stepping up in the ninth. She's working on two strikes. That's Best something that's very important this, week, this year, too, the consistency factor. Best she could shoot would be 235. Michelle Feldman actually on a 235 pace if she'd continue to spare strike. So it, this match still could get close. Well, you wouldn't expect anything less.
Michelle Feldman, the critical ninth frame. Got that one a for the right. Messenger. Oh, not comes in the right in place. <laughs> Make sure she gets this one way right. Gets it out to all four. Four, five, comes in a little light, hoping the pin's coming over, leaves the 10. Okay, so right now, big shot for Kim Terrell. If she strikes here, she takes the lead for the first time in this match. Big shot by Kim. Oh, comes in a little light. A little light, I thought she'd carry that eight. Michelle did change to her spare ball. Ball goes a little straighter. Comes in just a little light, hoping to trip out that eight. And it's still standing. Fourth in points, tenth in average. Kim's always been a very, very consistent player. I've always been in the top ten. And she spares it up as we enter the tenth frame. Feldman in the lead now. Actually, she's in the lead over Terrell by just eight pins, in the lead by 20 over McPherson. But McPherson on a double can actually make this match. She could force Michelle Feldman to double if she strikes out. We could have a tie. Wendy taking a little time here. She knows how important these shots are. It's very warm in here. And often, it's tough to get a grip, especially under the television lights. And Wendy is one of the field players out here. She wants a very dry hand before she puts her hand in the ball, takes a few extra seconds, uses some rosin. Gets that ball to the right. Good shot by Wendy. Carries the 10 this time. She has a little room out there. A little bit, a little bit. The TV finalists tonight made all made one general statement. The more you get your ball to the dry, you're, the better your carry was at times. Seven caches out of seven for Michelle Feldman. Oh. That is disastrous for Michelle Feldman. Looks like she gets the projection to the right with this ball, not quite as far out as she had gotten it on the right lane, and the ball does not come back. Leaves the two, four, eight, ten. She also seems like she threw that one just a little bit harder. Well, if Wendy strikes here, Michelle won't have a chance. But if she doesn't strike, Michelle Feldman will have to go for this spare. It really doesn't matter, assuming Wendy gets some good pin count, and then Kim Terrell will step up with her own chance in the 10th frame. Michelle Feldman after six strikes in a row to start the match. This match has really turned around. Sure has, and with the strike here, Wendy McPherson can shoot 235. Kim Terrell will have to double and nine count in the 10th to win this match. This is the Wendy Fuller of the decade, stepping up to the plate, throwing the good shots in the 10th. Got that one all last year. Yes, it did. Wow. So Wendy McPherson throws the last six strikes for 235. First two shots of Wendy, she was getting it way right to the gutter. This one she gets inside and it holds high flush. Well, Kim Terrell, it is now all up to you. You need a double and nine pins to advance. She's been in this position before. Takes a deep breath. Wow. Gets it to the right. Doesn't quite make it back. Leaves a 2 8. Wow, Wendy, I, Wendy shaking her head, and I can believe it because she was way behind in this match midway through. Yes, she was. This, this match turned around all three different ways. Gets it to the right. Doesn't quite make it up. We may be seeing a little bit of carry down on the TV pair. First game. They always change a little bit. Another good week for Kim Terrell. We may have to watch Grandpa, Grandpa Feldman's over there keeping score. He might have, he should have been sitting behind Michelle, maybe blow down the pins a little bit for her. 
We're back at the Empire State PWBA Classic. McPherson versus Nabel. Is we ready for the semifinal match? I wonder if there's a little rivalry going on here. You know, the, the Wendy and Maxine they travel together sometimes. And you always wonder that, don't you? With the roommates and... Yeah, I don't know. Tell me, is there rivalries that go on between the roommates, Carolyn? Well, when I'm on the lanes, I don't really care who you are, but and I think basically that's the way everybody thinks. Yeah, off the lanes, you're friends. Peterson looking up with a big strike. Just as she finished, she threw six in a row to end the game, starting with one now. That makes seven. I'll tell you, Wendy has that little hook to the right. She got that last shot in on the right lane and struck. She's got a little, little bit of area out there. This is Maxine's third year on tour right now. And opens up with a strike. Maxine is a strong player. She has a big hand. She has what you would call it a little bit of spin roll, but boy, she gets all of it. Doesn't take very much time. Gets right up there. Watching Wendy McPherson throw the shot in the second frame of the semifinal match, the Empire State PWGA Classic. We apologize for the technical difficulties due to weather. We're back with you now, though. Wendy McPherson advanced from the first match by throwing the last six with a final score of 235. To Feldman's 219 and Terrell's 214. She's moved on now to the semifinal match, throwing two strikes. Maxine Nabel is her competitor and has also thrown two strikes. I'm Jan Schmidt along with Carolyn Doran Ballard. Thanks for staying with us. We hope we'll stay with you now. Two consistent players this week. Wendy was no more than seventh. All Coming up late, leaving a seven count. Wendy's been getting the ball way out to the right. Doesn't look like a bad shot. Got a, a little bit left of her target. Not quite right out to the gutter. Leaves a 2-4-5. Doesn't quite finish. Remember, and, and Michelle, 2-4-8-10 on that lane. We could be seeing a little bit of the carry down. To the right. Still plenty of hook out to the gutter, though. Big smile with that spare. This lady, Maxine Nabel, two full years on tour. This is now her third year. No titles. It's only her third TV appearance, second singles TV appearance. She puts her feet together and just goes. Taking four steps to the line. One of the things Maxine worked on was her timing and her arm swing. She used, she used to just get up and go. Not even look, see where she put her feet. There she goes. Barely gets the ball in her hand. Takes that first step and gets the ball down. Loose arm swing. What that gave her was a little bit more of a consistent feel in the ball and a little bit of a consistent reaction on the lane. And she said if she takes the time to set herself, she doesn't get the ball moving. She doesn't get the ball moving. She holds it too long. She doesn't push it till almost her second second step. Not only that, there's too, much, too many things going through her head. So these two travel together fairly frequently. Carolyn, you talked about while we weren't with the audience. Is there a rivalry going on? Well, actually, Maxine rooms with Michelle Feldman, but they follow Wendy McPherson and Carol Jean Hunt Block. So I'm sure there's a little rivalry. I'm sure they bet dinner or who buys gas the next time they stop. But on the lanes, I think everybody has a little bit of a rivalry. But once you're off the lanes, it's back to the friendship. Wendy, fantastic match play record. She said 18 and 6. She said it's been quite some time since she's won 18 matches, and really, that's what kept her on the edge of staying in the top five. She said you couldn't fall behind. There was no, people were throwing strikes all over the place. You had to stay on top of things. So McPherson trailing by 12. As you see on our scoreboard, sponsored by Charlie Arden. 
see those pins in focus in just a moment. This is the Wendy of the four out of five years. Yes, it is. She said even though she's bowling just, and her exact word was fair this year, she doesn't dwell on, so she finished 12th, so she finished 15th. She says, you know what? You go on to the next week, could be my week. Four-time captain of the WIBC All-American team, 96, 97, 99, and 2000. That's consistency. Well, she was excited about her week. Great week. And Sometimes she, was, she doesn't feel happy when she makes a show about her performance, but she felt it was great this week. Better shot on that lane, got a little bit further right. Still coming in light, but blows the pins around. Well, it's early in the semifinal match. Maxine Nabel in the lead by just two pins. Stay with us for more. We shall return. We're back in the fifth frame of the Empire State PWBA Classic from Bowlers Club in Latham, New York. Once again, I'm Jan Schmidt along with Carolyn Doran Ballard. Maxine Nabel in the lead by two pins. Maxine, another international player coming with a lot of experience. 1998 World Cup champion. And that's the shot of a champion right there. Now she talked She's about... Looking. She talked about that um, no women's events... There's no women's events in Australia to bowl themselves. They bowl against the men and for a very low first place prize. So no bowling in school either over in Australia. Something Maxine has added to her game. She's using two different balls. One on each lane. Using the ball that rolls a little bit more on the left lane. Ball that goes just a little bit straighter on the right lane. Obviously the lane's playing different for her. Well, this shot here comes in a little light, sends a pin, do pin over. Gets the 10 out. This is the lane that everybody's starting to get that light hit, the 245 for Wendy, the light seven pin for Maxine. Maxine obviously a little bit tighter. Needs a ball that rolls just a little bit more. Wendy actually it looks like we have some deadwood. Deadwood in the channel, bowling pin in the channel. It will be played with very heavy hearts for both teams, but after a vote by the St. Louis Cardinal players, tonight's baseball game will go on. Jim Edmonds, J.D. Drew, and St. Louis Cardinals travel to Wrigley Field in Chicago to take on Sammy Sosa and the Cubs. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Nextel at 8 p.m. Eastern. Coverage begins with Baseball Tonight presented by Pep Boys at 7 p.m. Eastern. And for more, go to ESPN.com. As Wendy McPherson makes her shot in the sixth, we want to take a moment to extend all of our sympathies to the St. Louis Cardinals team and the families of Jack Buck and Daryl Kyle. Uh, Daryl, a starting pitcher who passed away yesterday, found in his hotel room, and Jack Buck, a longtime broadcaster. So uh, it is definitely with very heavy hearts that they are playing that game today in Chicago. Wendy, the youngest woman to capture the Triple Crown, the Queens, the U.S. Open, and the Invitational. There really isn't much that Wendy hasn't done. I'm sorry, and she's won the Queens twice. Yes. I mean, she's done it all. She's had a great career and still going. And that's why she's a little bit more easygoing now. The I have her way low, yes. She, she accepts things a little easier now. Like she says, she doesn't dwell on the bad weeks. I mean, when you've done it all, you have to set other goals for yourself. And, and she's done just that. Maxine Nabel, her best finish so far was 17th. That was last week. Other than that, 21st, 24th, 36th, 23rd, um, hovering around the cut number. Struggling a little bit. Like, like I said, she's been working on her timing and her arm swing to get a better, a consistent feel. Didn't quite get that one out to the right. Comes in light. Gets a, gets a break. Here's her arm swing. Gets it down on the first step, which she was not doing. Nice high back swing. But look at how loose she is. Comes through that ball. A great game. So she spares it up. Right now, trails by 20 pins. Kind of hard to watch Maxine there in action. She goes so quickly. <laughs> she does, and that seems to be, you know, Carol Giannotti from Australia, same trait, goes very quickly on the approach. Although Cara, a lot more deliberate. Cara Honeychurch from Australia. Different styles for different players. Better shot by Maxine. Oh. 
So right now, McPherson in the lead by 20. We'll be back to see who gets a shot at the title match right after this. Liz Johnson in 2001 had a fantastic year. It could have been a Bowler of the Year year, however, didn't even come in runner-up to Bowler of the Year, winning four titles throughout the season. And not only was she a good bowler, but who says nice guys finish last? Kathy Dorn Lizzie was on hand to present Liz with a special Liz, award. As the PWBA Players Association president, and on behalf of all of the players, it is my honor to present to you the 2001 Robbie Award, voted on by all of your peers, to the athlete that best exemplifies professionalism and sportsmanship. We wish you continued success and congratulations. Thank you, Kathy. This is a great honor, especially because I was recognized by my peers. Now continue to try to be a professional on and off the lanes. She is definitely that, a professional on and off the lanes. McPherson now in the lead by 20. She'll be stepping up in the eighth. She can take that lead to 30 with another strike as she's working on four in a row. Carolyn, she has really come on after that first match. This is the most aggressive I've seen Wendy come, you know, come out from start to finish. She was, she was another one who had mentioned, you know, sometimes she kind of waited till late in the game to get her feel and get it going. Not tonight. Wow. And she had, you know, a high game this week at 299, so she definitely threw some strikes on some pairs. Seems like she fell off that shot a little bit, but got it right. Lane just took it right to the pocket. But her low game was 183. I mean, that was the difference. I mean, the consistency factor in the top five. You know, 183 is not a bad game. No. You know, it's it, one shot here and there. You hope for that to be your low game. As you can see, McPherson taking that lead now to 30 and again can take it to 40 with one more strike. Whoa! <laughs> And uh, the lead looks as good as her face looked think, on that shot. I think she knew exactly what could happen. She got it to the dry, it seems, a little bit early. Right out of her hand, got it to the right. Almost in the channel. Hangs on. Whips back right through the nose. And, oh, she knows it. Ouch. And this one, really just take the wood on this one. Almost impossible to pick up. Maxine mentioned that this year she's finally realized how how hard it is on the tour. And it was kind of funny to come from her because she's so easygoing and always so bubbly and peppy. But she said, you know, now it's a job. And she said it's tough for her this year because she's missing family so much because she has a, a new niece, Monique, just nine months old. And she's just realizing what tour life is all about. It's true. You do traveling, you know, seven, eight, nine weeks in a row. You miss out on a few things. She got this one left to target, goes high, leaves the three pin, changes to a ball, goes a little bit straighter. So she'll step up in the 10th on that spare and can strike out for 227. Can force Wendy McPherson to mark in the 10th frame. One of the things that Maxine was most proud of this week, she was no lower than six throughout the whole week. She was. Sixth, second, first, first, second, second. Most consistent. She's been in a while. And she is stepping up and making the shot. I mean, you know what? It almost looks like she doesn't care, but she does. It's just her mannerisms. It's her mannerisms. That's how she stays cool. She collects her thoughts. It's just part of her personality, but she does care. She wants that first title. Big shot here to force a mark out of Wendy McPherson. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Looks like she threw that one a lot harder than she did the shot before. Leaves a two pin. 217 if she spares this one up. Wendy will just need six pins on two balls. Okay, 216. It didn't really matter. Figure Wendy can manage five or six pins on two balls. She 
will need five, but again, she'll get two shots to get those five, and the least she's had so far this match is seven on her first shot. Especially her niece Kendall and enjoy that shot. Now she's got a chance at the title. Things are really going Wendy's way, actually. And, and many times it's not the case for Wendy McPherson, it seems. The last couple of years, things have been going against her. People get a big break or pick up a split to beat her. And she's left a few pocket splits herself on some good shots. Stone eight one week. <laughs> early on that first match and it's like somehow she willed it turned it around she's finishing up here and right now can strike for 242 Defeats Naval 241 to 216. But first, when we come back, the effects of Title IX on college bowling in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. Final score of match two Wendy McPherson 241 to Naval's 216. McPherson stepped up in the 10th, and this time just needing some pins, five to be exact, but that's not enough for Wendy McPherson. She takes all 10, so coming up next, McPherson will go head-to-head -head against top seed Leanne Boomerberg in the championship match. We're ready for the championship match, and so far this year, five for five, the top seeds in the single matches have won the championship. But let's look at these two career-wise on TV, six and six. All tied up, someone here is gonna change that tonight. First look at Leanne Barrett tonight. She was on the show also last week. Great opening shot. Leanne also said, while she was down there throwing crack shots, the left lane is a little bit tighter, which now is the reason why Maxine probably felt like she had to throw two, two different balls, but it'll be interesting to see if Leanne uses the same ball on the right lane. Well, not only are these two uh, six and six career TV, but against each other on TV, their average is very close. Wendy McPherson, 222, Leanne Barrett, 219 against the other on TV. <laughs> And it sure looks like it'll be close if we're, you know, first frame's any indication. Both veterans. 42 titles between them. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot of appearances on TV. That's a lot of victories. A lot of experience. So, Pearson had the edge throughout the week, but that even was close, 265 to 244. And they both have, a, on the TV pair, both have a high average. So do we just revert to the uh, top seeds victories so far this year? We could do that. Now Wendy McPherson's pretty comfortable on the lanes right now. got that one in just a little bit she and she came back and I think reading her lips said I threw that awful she got a break she missed way left on that shot but with her ball speed got it down the lane and left the ring 10 got a break she'll step up and make short order of this 10 pin I'm sure fought hard to capture that top seed position last night. Six tournaments thus far. 
five champions, the five singles champion, the one that didn't, as you see there, the doubles team, Kendra Gaines and Melissa Brownie, um, they qualified third, but that was a different format. It was a Baker doubles every other frame. So the odds are obviously in Leanne's favor from past weeks. Got that one way out to the right, left the seven pin. Gets it way right. Fifth, sixth board. Leaves the seven pin. Actually, on that lane on the practice shot, she was getting it out to three, four. Didn't quite finish. May have to get a little bit further right. I don't know. That was questionable when she put that put that shot down at the seven pin. Talked about the fight in position round. It was close for fifth spot also. Liz Johnson, Tineldra Halva were both in contention. There's our Rookie of the Year in eighth. Caroline, you snuck in. And uh, 1994 rookie there, there, Tammy Turner in 12th from Ogden, Utah. And Marsha Kamrowski has cashed in all seven events this year so far. Good for her. You know, she went to that training camp, that Evanette training camp to start the season. And it has really helped her. Good strike for me. Actually, I think it's helped her confidence. It taught her a lot about her, her own game and about equipment and how to play lanes, and I think it was very beneficial to her and a lot of other ladies. All even right now on our scoreboard sponsored by Travel Lodge Hotels. Wendy McPherson in the third. As we see points, Wendy sixth, average seventh. Another player always been in the top ten and actually been in the top, I'd say, three over the last five or six she years. <laughs> actually eighth in earnings. So not, not up to first Once again, it'll be a new champion for the year. Seven different, six different champions going in so far to this week. Michelle and Kim had a chance of making it a, a two-time champion. Two-time champion. And that's unusual. Boy, last year, oh. Carolyn, you had, uh, you know, three titles by now. A little more versatility out there. We've had some different lane conditions, different scoring pace. It's nice to see. So everybody in on the action this year, taking a piece of the titles. And Wendy looks like she really wants it. You know, she just, because she had such a good feel all week, she looks more pumped up than, than normal for Wendy McPherson. She said, I had a good week. I used three different balls. I had the right angle. I had great carry. All I did at night was I shined a couple balls up, threw it a little bit harder. I mean, she was comfortable with everything that she did. You see the stance, Leanne Barrett. She got that right foot back a little bit. It takes the pressure off her left hip. It's really helped her out this year. Oh, 10 pins snapping up. We talked a lot about Title IX and its impact on sports, but you know, it also impacted academics. And it's interesting to see that the changes in women in 1994, 38% of women received medical degrees compared to 9% in 72. 43% of the law degrees compared to 7%. So a lot of things change for women as a result of that, not just sports. Right. Some of the other finishers this week, Karen Stroud making six of seven cuts. There's last week's champ, Car Honeychurch, and Kathy Stormley is still on a roll. 21st, Jackie Mitscavige, Pennsylvania native, and Shelly Shermer, who went in for Linda Follett, who was the amateur. She got injured. And Shelly came in, and she's one of our regional members. So Leanne Barrett trailing now by 10 pins. She's on the strike, spare, strike, spare pace. Ooh, gets a break, gets the 10 out, only leaves the 4-7. The last shot on that lane, it looked like she threw a little bit harder. Ball didn't quite finish. Seems like she softened up a little bit, went just a little high, but got a break. Knocks out the 10. Leaves the 4-7 spare. She knew she got it in a little bit. Okay. This is okay. Covers it up. And we had told her she was a little fatigued this week. The knee, leg bothering her a little bit. A lot of injuries after seven weeks. A lot of games. Making the TV shows. You're blowing those extra games, extra practice games, warm-up. It's a lot of wear and tear on the body.
Pearson in the lead by 12. She can take it to 22 with one more strike. She's working on a double. She said her game plan tonight was, I need to strike a lot. She's been doing just that. What's one more? And if you're enjoying this, Sunday, the Professional Women's Bowling Association will conclude its Sunday series on ESPN with the finals of the Greater Syracuse Classic from Flamingo Bowl in Liverpool, New York. Catch all the action live beginning at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com or you can go to PWBA.com and get some player information. Hope you join us for that event. Come on out, bowl the program, and be there for the TV show. Leanne Barrett taking a couple of deep breaths as Wendy McPherson steps up, working on three strikes. All-time career earnings leader, which I am not a bit shocked at. Yeah! 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 Everything seems to go Wendy's way tonight. Second time she's knocked out the 10, sending a pin over there. Good shot, doesn't quite get it all the way to the right. Comes back half pocket, but sends the pin off the board. Knocks it out of there. Hoping, hoping. Oh, and she's letting them know she is there to be reckoned with. Wow. Here it is again. It had eyes. I think it was scared. Well, that messenger didn't lose its way. Leanne Barrett now stepping up in the sixth, working on a spare. Leanne, very happy with her performance the last two weeks. She said six consistent rounds in this week qualifying first with that 233 average and one of the things that I really noticed this week I've noticed it before in the past but even bowling next to, to Leanne for as much as Leanne hooks the ball she can also get right throw it a little bit harder square up in the heads a little more I mean she's very versatile oh, that's a break misses left a little bit goes Brooklyn but trips out that six pin thing Leanne really emphasized on this week when she because there was so much hook to the right she didn't have to use her hand she took her hand out of the ball and let the hook on the lane take it to the pocket third place finished last week so she was very happy with her performance last week except she had just one bad shot she left a split and it cost her the match better shot by Leanne comes in right gets that seven pin out of there well, will Leanne continue the top seed victory streak, or will Wendy McPherson stop her cold? McPherson's out in front by 32. Stay with us. We're back in the middle of the championship match of the Empire State PWBA Classic. We're at Bowlers Club in Latham, New York, just outside the capital of the state, Albany. I'm Jan Schmidt, along with Carolyn Dorn Ballard, and Wendy McPherson actually leads by 22 pins. However, if she strikes here in the seventh, it will be back to 32. Wendy seems to be creating her own grace. Tonight, six time WRBC All-American. Oh, and as you said that, I mentioned that she, I, the championship match, it was one last year. She left an eight pin to lose and was not happy with it. Another good shot by Wendy, especially after the commercial break, waiting a little bit. Good shot, gets it in a little bit, but she's got that little bit of hold. Stone eight. Well, she is still out in front, and that's at least if you have to leave it, not that you want to, but. And like I said, she's creating her own breaks. She's, you know, she's had some tough luck on TV. You know, four lining, breathing the eight pin, people getting some lucky strikes against her, you know. Yeah, it definitely looked like it's turned around this week. 19 career titles for Wendy McPherson. You know, actually, she's had a title Looking back, all the way back um, to 1995. Mm -hmm. Every year since 1995. Wants to continue it. She does. It's seven. She can make it. Ooh, got that one way right. Didn't know if it was coming back. Comes back right. 
And she liked it. Gets this one way right down the lane. Comes back light. Shoves the seven pin off the deck. So Leanne Barrett now stepping up in the eighth, working on two strikes. She trails by 21, but she can take it to 11 with another strike and make it a match. Gets it right off her hand, gets it way out, hits the dry, here it comes. That's the result. No pins on the deck, best result you can have. Absolutely, as she trails by 11, a strike here in the ninth would take it to one pin. We'd have a one pin match as Wendy McPherson would step up to finish. 19 and five, what a match play record. She was phenomenal in the last two rounds of match play. She made a couple ball changes, and there were three or four games in a row where she had the front seven every game. Bold, fantastic. Plus, her opponents for the week only averaged two or seven. That was pretty low. Everybody get on that lane and blow the pins around. That's the lane that both ladies said was a little tighter. Gets down the lane a little bit longer. Still gets it right, not as quite, not as right on as on the right lane, but gets the action she needs. So Wendy McPherson will finish this match first. She'll step up in the ninth and tenth. It's all in her control. She can shut out Leanne Barrett. She need to strike here first things first. Need to strike in the ninth frame. 234 average on the TV pair. Great. She is impressive. Right, right now, she can strike out for a score of 259. Best Leanne Barrett can do would be 248. She was no lower than seventh this week. She said she enjoyed the week from start to finish. This just tops it all off. She can put it all away with a couple of strikes here in the 10th. And as past his history states with Wendy, when Wendy gets on a roll and finds her little niche, she's going to strike, and she's going to win. Oh. Good shot. Didn't quite get it as far right. Everybody's getting it a little bit further left on the left lane. Leaves a ring 10. Solid at the line. Great rotation. Ring 10. So once again, between these two ladies on television, the match is very close. It's going to come down to the 10th frame. One of them will be seven and six against the other career TV. That's fair and important. The pin count here is going to be very important as well. Just taking a look over at the scoreboard. And Leanne Barrett is going to have a chance to step up and hold up the top seed victory streak. Once again, our matches coming down in the ninth and 10th frame. Very exciting. This is what makes these lady athletes so good. They step up to the plate. They make good shots. Whether you get the result or not, sometimes it's luck, sometimes it's not. And they play tournament for Wendy. No matter what the outcome is, Wendy's back. 236 for Wendy McPherson. Leanne Barrett will need the first strike in the 10th, and then a nine spare would be enough. Leanne Barrett's last title came at the Storm Challenge in Cape Coral, Florida in 2001. It was in the fall. Been in this position many times. You don't win 23 titles not being in that position. She gets it right. Yeah. Great shot by Leanne. Gets it right. Let's the dry bring it to the pocket. Blows the rack. Taking a deep breath, getting ready for that next shot. Let's see. Right off her hand. 
gets it right, just touching outside of five, comes roaring back, and she likes it. Yeah, she says. Oh, come on, kick it out. So she needs nine at least on this ball or a strike. Another thing, the animation. Leanne, very low key. She's letting you know she likes that shot. She's here to win. She told us she tries to stay on an even keel, not so e not so even when she's going for her first title of the year. Both ladies, though, Wendy got into it, showing you where you're at. I want it. Needs at least nine on this shot. She would get. Come on! Nine. So she will need the spare. If she misses the spare, we would have a tie. She's waiting for the score to be added on the big projector. Fran, just tur Fran Deacon, tournament director, just showed it to her. She's looking up. She's wanting to know if she needs the spare and. She just found out she needs the spare to win. Taking a deep breath. Yeah. And she has it. Yeah. Leanne has her first victory of 2002 by a pin. And she's looking over for me. Sure. She will come double check in the score. So Leanne Derrick continues the top seed dominance. The final score, 237 to 236. We'll be back with more. There is your champion of the Empire State PWBA Classic. Final score, 237 to 236. Leanne Barrett, victorious. Debbie Sippel, the president of the Albany Women's Bowling Association with some beautiful flowers. Leanne, congratulations on an absolutely wonderful tournament and a fantastic final game. <laughs> and she's going to carry those what? out with her so you. that Leanne can collect the really good stuff. Carol Judge coming in with the trophy and the check. Leanne, I'd like to I'd like to present you with this trophy and a check for $10,000. Congratulations. So she hits $10,000. Leanne Barrett captures career title number 24. Join us next Sunday at 4.30 Eastern for the finals of the Greater Syracuse Classic from Flamingo Bowl at Liverpool, New York. Right now, stay here for Sports Center. For Carolyn Dorn Ballard, I'm Jan Schmidt. So long. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Thank you.